evening. It, it... Got it. Good evening, everybody. It's uh, August 8th. Welcome to the Town of Rhinebeck regular town board meeting. Um, would everybody like to join me for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, may I have a motion for approval of prior minutes from our August 11 and August 21st, 2022 town board meetings? So moved. Thank you, Chaucer. May I have a second? Second. Thanks, Alan. Is there any discussion or any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Thank you, it passes unanimously. Um, we have uh, Neville Smythe joining us tonight to give us a very brief presentation on um, a, a community needs assessment uh, for Red Hook and Rhinebeck. Um, and uh, Neville is representing the town of Red Hook Responds and the Red Hook Community Center. And I see that also uh, Sarah Ugolini and young, Young Il Sumagari is also joining us for this. So thank you for coming. Shall I begin? Take it away, Neville. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, thank you, uh, Supervisor Spinzi and the members of the uh, Rhinebeck Town Board for considering this proposal. Um, the, the proposal for which is in your packet is called Community Needs Assessment for Red Hook and Rhinebeck, New York. Um, we did a, a actually a, a request for proposal nationally and, um, and ultimately selected the one from Hudson Valley Pattern for Progress uh, for two primary reasons. One was community knowledge. Um, as one might expect, a local organization knows more about our area than, than others do. And, um, and they're, they're very um, well experienced in a lot of the issues that, that uh, that happened in the Mid Hudson Valley, and and I would say also importantly was one of cost, um, partially because of their locality and and their desire to work with us. Um, we were able to get um, the price to about thirty thousand um, dollars, which was about twenty thousand less than the um, the other ones that we strongly considered. Um, so you may be asking why two Red Hook based nonprofits want to undertake a broad community needs assessment. Um, covering both of these uh, uh, towns um, without going into the missions of our organizations, which we, we would, would be happy to share if you would like. Um, but um, we've both been very active during the recent pandemic, aiding individuals in our area who were challenged by access to, um, to food, isolation, and other challenges. Um, both of our organizations, despite our names, serve both Red Hook and Rhinebeck um, but also other surrounding areas. Um, we are pivoting away from COVID right now and continuing to see challenges faced by members of our communities. For our own strategic planning purposes, we see a need to assess the needs of residents in our area, but we also know that the challenges faced by many are larger than our two organizations' missions and will likely need the focus of other not-for-profits, municipalities and county, state, and even federal governments. Um, or the federal government. Um, for example, someone who is food insecure might also have housing issues or medical issues, either temporary or permanent. Nonprofits often put band-aids on problems, but our hope is with this type of robust study, we might be able to give a more holistic analysis, which may result in better solutions for our residents. This needs assessment will use interviews, focus groups, surveys, and statistical analysis to, to identify areas of need in our communities, which can then be acted on by everyone who wants to improve the lives of those living here. Um, we also are well aware that Rhinebeck is undertaking a comprehensive plan. And we think that this study will, will enhance the human response um, to what is needed to support all members of the community. Um, towards the $30,000 needed for this proposal, we have received verbal commitments totaling $20,000 um, of which 5,000 from the Dyson Foundation, 
5,000 from the Thomas Thompson Trust and, the, and 10,000 from the town of Red Hook. Um, this week, we are talking to you and the villages of uh, Rhinebeck and Red Hook to ask for their support. Um, once funded, we will then put together a small task force to work with Pattern to make sure we get the best information possible, especially from residents who may be harder to reach. Um, and then just to sum up, uh, Rhinebeck and Red Hook are, are very special places, as we all know, um, and two of the jewels that make up the Mid-Hudson Valley. Um, but not everyone who calls this home are able to live healthy and safe lives. We feel it is critical to understand where the gaps and challenges are so we can collectively um, can raise up everyone who calls Red Hook and Rhinebeck home. We feel this community needs assessment is an important investment in our residents and will help all of us meet um, their needs um, with greater clarity. Um, at this point, we are open, uh, Sarah, jung Il, and I are open to questions from, um, from anyone. Thank you, Neville. It's a great uh, and concise presentation. Um, are you looking for funding this year or next year? Um, I guess my, my sense is it can be both. We, we, we plan on getting started um, provided we get our funding um, this year, but it will go into next year. And I know that that pattern will not need the money. Money's all up front. So I think we have some flexibility depending on um, the budgets that um, from where the money is coming from. Great. So if the board were to agree that we wanted to participate in this, we could fund it in our 2023 budget? I believe that. I don't believe that would be an issue. Um, does anyone on the town board have any questions for Neville? I mean, I think that, um, you know, it's a worthwhile project at the very least. We'll gain more information about um, financially insecure residents in our community and what needs aren't being met. And it will give us information that could maybe help us, you know, hone policy or services. But does anybody else have a comment or a question for Neville? I guess I was just curious, um, when the data is received, is, is there an intent or at least an expectation about what's next? Just because I have no idea. So I'm just sure. um, so I, I think I so don't have a crystal ball. Under, understood. I, I believe that part of the part of the um, analysis that uh, pattern will give us will I, I, it will give us um, areas to explore. Um, and, and again, it's going to be from um, tactical things that we as an, as our organizations can do up to, um, I mean, some of the issues are gonna be big like affordable housing um, and, and, where, and it, those are gonna be bigger challenges than even we can, you and we can even sometimes um, uh, think about. So, um, you know, I, I, one of the things that's at the very end of the proposal, it's actually on page 26 of your packet um, it's page 24 of the actual proposal um, for additional money that they, they will actually um, assist in the pr presentation of the work that they're doing um, publicly. Um, and so when I, when I right now, we, we believe we have about $20,000 committed to this with arguably only 10,000 to go. Um, if if we were to receive additional monies beyond that, um, there there are I, there are two areas that I think that that we would be able to use those funds for. One would be the assistance of Pattern in analyzing, further analyzing, and working with us to study the data and and what what can be done more with it. And then the other is is one of the reasons we got the price down to thirty thousand dollars is that we're really focusing in geographically on the villages and towns of, of Rhinebeck and Red Hook. Um, I know that, the, I mean, we are, both of our organizations serve Milan and Southern Columbia County and, and other areas. Um, it, it, additional monies potentially could also help us slightly expand. We're not looking to do Northern Dutchess County by any means, but some of the neighboring counties that, that also benefit from services that both Red Hook and Rhinebeck provide. Um, um, so thank um, you, sir. Long-winded answer. No, no, thank you. Anybody else, Chauncey, Ed, uh, Al, any questions? No, if I understand what you said before about the money that you've raised, it sounds as though 
need 10 more from the village of Red Hook, the town of Rhinebeck and the village of Rhinebeck, assuming all three participate. Is that right? That, that th those three could fill that gap, yes. I mean, in other words, you only need 10,000 more and those three have not yet pledged anything. That is correct. Okay. Um, just so you know, can I, can I say what the pledges are, Neville? Yeah, no, I, um, so the, 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 uh, it was 5,000 from Dyson, 5,000 from the Thompson Trust, and 10,000 from the town of uh, Red Hook. And, and I'll say we are, we're actually right after this meeting where we'll be meeting with the uh, village of Red Hook and then tomorrow with the village of Rhinebeck. So we will, we'll have, we'll have I, I, I don't know whether we'll have feedback that quickly. I don't know how fast you all work on these things. Thank but, you. Uh, um, but, but let me just pull, pull the board here. Is there any interest um, from, from everyone, anyone in contributing some funding towards this needs assessment? For the two sure. communities, yes, yeah, Ed, absolutely, yes. Josh, Alan, yes. Chance, I think so. I, I, I'd like to know where the village of Rhinebeck stands, if if we can find out. And also, I think that even even though ten thousand dollars split three ways, if that were to be the way it works out, is a very modest investment, and I wouldn't hesitate at all really to support that, were that all that's involved. There's enough involved, I imagine, we will find in terms of staff time, board time, community time, and so forth, that I think it probably would be prudent due diligence um, for us in some way to talk to the references. We've got Ulster County Housing Needs Assessment, Westchester Affordable Housing Needs Assessment, and the Kingston Vacant Building Study. I would like to see us explore this a little bit with those before we make a decision. Sure. Would you like to take that on for for our team or? <laughs> you, yes. Having, of course, I had to be prepared to say yes. So okay. Um, and I also want to say, you know, we this is something we could use some of our ARPA funds for very easily. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Our community needs assessment. So, Neville, I think you have here a. Um, pretty unanimous uh, vote of support. So we'll continue to talk about it. Chauncey will do some due diligence and we'll decide if we can fund it this year through um, ARPA or you know what, what extra money we have. Uh, if the village does it, we could certainly use part town funds for this uh, as a town's, the town's portion. So, um, I think we're very supportive and we'll come back to you with how much and what our time period is. Terrific, and if Chauncey, if I can be of any assistance in that um, due diligence, I'd be very happy to participate with you on that. Do, uh, thank you, and, and I won't hesitate to call on you. Do we have your contact information in the packet? <clears throat> yes, um, we have Neville's email, uh, which the clerks can forward to you. Thank, thank you. you. All right, thank Thanks, you. Neville. Thanks, Thank you Neville. very much for your time. Jamil and Sarah, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks um, so much. Uh, okay, I just, a uh, couple of announcements. I just want to mention that um, our highway superintendent, Bob Wyan, is again getting kudos uh, for his use of, of brine on our treating our roads. Um, I shared with uh, everyone uh, a letter that he received or we received from the Dutchess County Environmental Management Council. And it's really a cost analysis of the brine uh, for the roads. So not only is it environmentally really wonderful, but it's also cost savings. And I just wanna thank Bob publicly for this, you know, give them a pat on the back and tell them how much it's appreciated by me financially and by me as an environmentalist. I, he's doing leading work in the county and the state and it's something that we should be proud of. So I just wanted to announce that. Right. Um, another announcement that I have is that we have a whole bunch of COVID tests at town hall. Um, the expiration date was the 24th of July, but the CDC has ex extended that. Um, can everybody hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hello? Yes, yes. you're there. 
the expiration date was my birthday which is well they've extended it for well, six months. I thought it was my expiration date too <laughs> <laughs> they've extended it for six months so they're good okay. until january all of the covid tests that you have that are county um dis dispersed by the county through us are extended by six months so that's the only other um announcement i have did anybody else on the board have any announcements no. okay um i have i want to skip to the back of the presentation and we have um jacqueline so Savolian, Savolian here, the new executive director of the Star Library, to talk to us about a story walk. Um, it's it's I think it's the last tab. No, it should be tab um, nineteen. I just want to say that the library um, applied for and received a grant for this which is great, but it's odd because it's on town property and we didn't know about the grant. So Jacqueline is briefly going to talk about to us about what this is. And in your packet, I've included a map of where these story, um, I don't story pages, these story posts would go. So thanks, Jacqueline. Thanks. And I know the last name is really tricky. It's Savolainen. Um, just like it's spelled, you just have to take your time with it. Thank um, you. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. yes. Yeah? Great. Excellent. Thank you. So first off, thank you for making the time for me to join you this evening. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce myself to the board and let you know I'm truly looking forward to supporting efforts related to the town's comprehensive plan and other community endeavors. I think it's important for the library and town leadership to have a strong relationship and I know the Star Board of Trustees agrees and wants to increase the library's involvement with town activities. For example, we've been happy to receive close to 50 rec camp campers every day this summer, um, giving them cool space, cold water, and opportunities to play games. Um, they might even occasionally look at books sometimes, <laughs> play on the computers. Uh, it's a great way for our young residents to get to know the library and feel at home here get to know the people who work here. Um, just seeing their increasing level of comfort over the course of the summer is, is wonderful. It's also a great way for the library to support a town program. Both my children went through the rec camp um, program and always enjoyed their time in, in the library. It was, it was a cool break, literally and figuratively. Yeah, and thank you for that. That's an important component of our, our summer rec. So thank you for that. It's, it's great. Um, so I hope we can find more opportunities for partnership and, and mutual support. Um, I've been director of the library for only slightly over a month, but I've been a part of this community for many years. My husband and I got married at Montgomery Place 24 years ago. We bought our house here a few years later, raised our children here, and I'm in my sixth year serving on the Rhinebeck School Board. We love living here, and I'm deeply honored to be working for Star Library and the people of Rhinebeck. I look forward to getting to know all of you and attending town board and committee meetings as much as I can. The matter that brings me here tonight is a proposal to install a story walk along the trail of Thompson Mazzarella Park. Longtime resident, uh, Rhinebeck resident, Gretchen Lytle, introduced this idea to my predecessor, Stephen Cook, with the goal of providing literacy-based, early, early literacy-based family activity in an outdoor community setting, bringing together exercise, reading, nature, and art. Although this started as a pandemic safe idea, it has so much potential for creative interpretation in any time period. A Dutchess County grant, as Elizabeth mentioned, uh, fun provided funding for durable metal and acrylic display cases on metal posts, which the library now has. Michael DeCola, uh, chair of the park committee, has agreed to create time on the committee's next meeting agenda for a full presentation and exploration of the story walk installation. I, in my very busy first month, uh, I found that this project was more involved than I initially thought. And to borrow Chauncey's phrase from earlier, uh, prudent due diligence is, is really needed. And, I, and I'd like to give the time uh, and the research that this 
proposal deserves in order to be able to present more fully to the to the parks committee uh, in September. Um, so for now, I'm happy to answer any general questions you might have about the concept, but I'd like to address detailed questions during the presentation to the park committee in September. And that's that's what I've got for today. Are there questions? You know, I think I think uh, unless there is some objection, I think I'd like to try and attend your presentation to the Parks Committee. Has it been scheduled? They haven't scheduled their September meeting. Usually, they meet uh, the third Saturday of September uh, of of the, of the month. But Michael said that he's hoping to push it up earlier in the month in September. So we don't have a date yet. And I'd be happy for you know any and all of you to be there. Um, I have two comments. Um, one is that. Um, any installation, I talked to Melanie Moore, would likely require uh, a site plan amendment from the planning board. And two, um, I would suggest that you present alternative sites for this. I think it's a great idea, but personally, I don't know how the rest of the board thinks. I think we're installing um, um, visual disturbances in a natural uh, calm habitat. I, I personally see a delineation between active and passive recreation in our park. So that's my point of view. Yeah, I, I am working on alternative sites since I understand the process that this went through uh, was not ideal, I think due to some of the time pressures of, of the grant. Um, but I've gotten an extension on the grant. Um, and so that that helps relieve. Um, and I'm looking at alternative sites. It is, I will point out, you know, the the proposal for the site location, which is totally flexible, totally flexible. Um, but the proposal is the upper part of the park um, across from the library, kind of around the field and the and the Yeah, we have parts. the map included. Yeah. In our, okay, in our great. Data. Good, so good. I just wanted see, to it's just I think it's adding visual busyness to a very calm area. So there are other areas in the park where there's more um, in, uh, substructure and it, it might fit in seamlessly there. That's just my opinion. Sure. Are you suggesting Everybody... alternative that we come up with an alternative map within the park or were you suggesting alternative plan? I for just had two comments. One is yeah. that I it would need a um, any installation would need planning board approval and a site plan amendment to our master park schedule. And two, I, I don't favor it in a sort of quiet, calm, natural area. I think it's, I, I'm not, I'm trying to tiptoe around here, but I, I, yeah, I understand. But aesthetics aside, procedurally, the, the, the park committee has to have buy-in and bring it to the town board. And then the planning board has to have approval, correct? Is that the basic well, the problem? town board has to be behind this. And what should have happened is that the library should have spoken to us before the grant was even applied for because it's our property. So um, yeah, procedurally, it's it's our decision. We want to hear what the committee has to say, but their advisory. And then whatever is decided would have to be approved by the planning board. I have a question, Elizabeth. Um, in terms of the site plan amendment for an installation, uh, I guess one of my questions is uh, about what constitutes an installation. Whether... I don't. I, I can't answer this for you, and this okay. is not my area of expertise. Sure, I I'll briefly find that out. showed it to Melanie Moore, the chair of our planning board, and she said she believed it would require a site plan. So I think you would have to go to, uh, if this were approved, you would have to go to our uh, building department for a, a permit. It would be kicked to our zoning administrator for. Um, for um, a ruling and it and he would determine whether or not it needed site plan approval um, or even a, a, a but, variant. But but could but in theory, couldn't a president couldn't a application be made to the town to the uh, planning board now? No, not without our approval. So you you keep 
You have to have our approval first before anything else happens. I, I believe so, yes. Okay, I didn't and know we, that. We should, have, we should have approved this before the grant was applied for. It's highly irregular to have um, an outside party get a grant for something on town property without town approval. Anybody else? Well, great. Thanks for coming, Jacqueline. And, you know, Steve and I had a great working relationship. I talk to him weekly. He'll be missed. Um, and I'm, you know, always here for you. And always the board is always open, um, you know, and just pick up the phone and call me. I'm at town hall. And I can't thank you enough again for, you know, I forget about what the library does for the campers in summer. And it is really wonderful. So thank you. Thank you for making the time for me tonight. Okay, we'll be, we'll come back around. I'm sure we'll wait and see what the park committee says and then we'll have to um, discuss it. Okay, thanks. Sure. Thank you, okay, um, I think I'm going to go back to our agenda. Um, resolution number one, um, our deputy, uh, clerk uh, expertly reminded me that statutorily we need to reaffirm um, some of our um, policies every year per the Department of State. So uh, that's why we're reaffirming the policies that we're reaffirming because we, we have to. So thank you, Joan, for, for making us, helping us be compliant. Um, I would like a motion for um, resolution 2022-172 to reaffirm our investment policy. So, so moved. Thank you, Chauncey. May I have a second? Second. Is that Alan? Yes. Oh, good. Is there any discussion or any questions? Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, may I have a motion for resolution 2022-173 uh, for the purchase of park benches and tables? I'll make a motion. Thank you, Ed. May I have a second? Second. Thanks, Alan. Um, any discussion? Um, these are the ones that you um, sourced out, Josh? Yep. They are. Um, the, only, the only conversation I have is that we picked green as of right now. Just want to talk about if that's OK aesthetically. I think it's the right choice, but. There's black, red, blue, and yellow. As it, you know, you're the RISD chain. Uh, uh, That's train why I picked green, but I want to put it out there so that I can. Have, I like the green. I like the black fence. Green is fine. Yeah. It's, right. It screams no, part. I, I think they're the right things. They're a couple bucks more than the cheapest ones, but I think they're better built, slightly better designed. So yeah. I'm on board. I just want to let everyone know that Josh did some deep research. We looked at modern benches. We looked at classic, you know, um, Gramercy Park style benches. We looked at it all. Josh really covered a lot and this put a lot. This is why I ran for book. public office. What? This is why I ran for public office. It's the details. They're, the devil is in the little thing. So, you know, it's a but, good. But the other piece is all the broken old wooding, wooden benches and picnic tables are going away as soon as they bye bye away. yep clean nice new benches so thanks for your work on it and um, um appreciate it a any other questions or, co or comment all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed uh, passes unanimously um i would like a motion for a resolution 2022-174 for photos for the town website so moved Thanks, Chauncey. May I have a second? Second. Thanks, Josh. Um, in looking at our website, the clerks and I thought that maybe something that would help um, visually stimulate it is by putting up a seasonal, monthly, or you know, every bi-monthly photos of um, local beautiful things in Rhinebeck. And we thought that a good way to do this would be to offer a $150 stipend for local artists to submit digital pictures. We would have a little blurb about them and, and select six rotating pictures um, that would be changed every month or every other month. We've had a couple of um, 
high school uh, high school students and former high school students who are um, also host, you know, uh, in art school. So um, for a nominal fee, we would be um, doing this. Right. Does anybody have any comments or questions? I want to thank thank the clerks for their work on this uh, initiative. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So so moved unanimously. Thank you. Um, uh, I'd like a motion for resolution 2022-175, assault Brian after Make a motion. Thanks, Ed. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Alan. This goes back to um, Bob Wyant's earlier pat on back. Um, he has been um, rigging um, his own brine applicators and this will be um, have a lot more control and allow a lot more uh, precision and flow control. So as we roll out from this pilot and really go to um, brine all of our roads, this will allow him to get them all covered before storms. Any co comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I, any opposed? Um, so moved unanimously. Thank you. Um, um, apropos of you know being compliant with the Department of State, um, I'd like a motion for resolution 2022-176 to review and amend um, our sexual harassment policy. May I have a motion? Motion. Thank you, Josh. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Um, the only um, amendment to this policy is New York State um, has issued an 800 number for um, reporting sexual harassment. So, so the state has mandated the inclusion of the phone number in our policy. Is that correct, Joan? Did I get that right? Okay. Um, any other comments or questions? All in favor of amending our sexual harassment policy? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It moves unanimously. Thank you. Um, I need a motion for resolution 2022-176 for the sale of transfer station container bins. Make a motion. Thank you, Ed. May I have a second? Second. Thanks, Alan. Any discussion or questions? Or to ask, small bins or big bins, what are they? The big bins have been there for about 15, 20 years, just wasting space. We need the space to okay. so just get rid of them, not use them. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, I need a motion for a resolution 2022-178 for the adoption of the natural resources inventory for the village and town of Rhinebeck. Um, I'll make a motion. May I have a second? I think I have the second. Is that Josh? It is. Okay, so if you remember a couple of meetings ago, we adopted the natural resource inventory that the town and the village worked on with um, Cornell and um, Ag and, and markets. And what we're doing now is adopting this as an amendment uh, appendix to our comprehensive plan. Um, are there any questions or comments? It's, um, it's a lot of data that's available on our website as well. Yeah, it's a lot of good data. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, any opposed? It passes uh, unanimously. Um, thank you. May I have a resolution, uh, a motion for resolution 2022-179 for the purchase <clears throat> of recreation park playground equipment? I'll make a motion. Thank you, Ed. May I have a second? Second. Chauncey, thanks. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, uh, I need a motion for resolution 2022-180 to amend our 2022 pool schedule. So moved. Thank you, Alan. May I have a second? Okay. Thanks, Josh. Are there any questions or comments? Basically, the manta rays are done practicing, so we're going to add more uh, lane swim time. All in favor? Aye. 
Aye. Any opposed? Moves unanimously. Thank you. I need a motion for resolution 2022-181 for lifeguard positions and salary change. May I have a motion? Motion. Thank you, Alan. May I have a second? Second. Is that Josh? Yeah. Right. Is there any discussion or comment? Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be a little bit depressed when Finn graduates next year and goes to college. <laughs> why? He's, he's a good friend of my son and he's moved up. In my well, short time of the government, I've eyed a lot of his positions. And so he's gonna maybe be he'll want to maybe he'll want a summer job because he's filling in, in now for kids going to college. Well, so going to Brown, our high schoolers Brown, are he might not ever come back. I'm sorry, what? He's going to swim at Brown, he might never come back. Another another Rhinebeck um, shirker. So, yeah, congratulations. <laughs> it's good. These kids are great. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll pile on the guilt. Fair enough. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That uh, moves unanimously. Um, and it's nice to see the kids grow up and take on more responsibility. I remember when they were teeny. Um, resolution 2022-182 for the purchase of a generator for Town Hall, Ed. Make a motion. <laughs> May I have a well, second. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's got Ed written all over it. It's like the trash bins and the and the generators. Sounds like the generator's name is Ed, but that's not what you meant. Like <laughs> no, no. That's the next resolution to name the generator Ed. <laughs> yeah. May I have a second? Sorry. Thanks, Chauncey. Is there any discussion or any um, questions for Ed? How many kilowatts? Oh, that's too technical. Just ask me a simple one. Just multiply watts times volts. Come on. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> okay. And divide by a thousand. The generator, can no yeah. the generator is no longer working and we need a new right. one. Can't even We've servicing. gotten three bids and right. um, GMES of Red Hook provided the lowest bid. So that's what we're going to do. That and it really has the correct wattage to um, <laughs> get the electricians have determined to that. power our town hall, right? Right, pretty much. All in favor? Aye. Aye, any opposed? Um, moves unanimously, thank you. Um, I need a motion for 2022-183 to reaward bid for town hall painting. I'll make yeah. a motion. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Thanks, Josh. Okay, third time's a charm. Um, any questions? Thank you, Ed. You're Ed. welcome. Yeah, let's hope it gets done. And done, I, yeah. I just want to say to people, so much of what we're experiencing in terms of not, you know, getting equipment and fields built and town hall painted, and even our road schedule is because of the supply chain slowdown and yeah. labor shortages. Um, so we're doing our best. And thanks for finding um, someone who could take this on. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. It passes unanimously. May I have a motion for resolution 2022-184 authorizing a steel track install at the transfer station? I'll make a motion. Thank Second. you. Ed. Is that Chauncey? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Josh? Um, He's gone. Josh, um, four, four, and one um, um, on a personal break. No. Any wall. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, you need a um, motion for resolution 2022 185 for revising our film permit application. Thank motion. Thanks, Ed. May I have a second? Second. Great. Um, I don't know if you know, but there is a film that's been happening in the village of Ryan Vic on Chestnut Street, and they've been calling us every other day to film on town streets, and they need a permit to do that. Um, so basically, what this resolution does is keeps it the same, except it allows the town supervisor and the town clerk to approve these, as long as it's all according to what we require. Yeah, um, so it doesn't have to come before a board. Uh, we um, in fifteen hundred dollars of payment, insurance, everything's still the same. Any questions or comments? No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs>
Any opposed passes unanimously. And this is in keeping with what many filming communities around the New York City studio zone do. Clerks just approve it. So thanks for doing this, Joan. Um, I will make a motion for resolution 2022-186 for our preliminary accounts payable extracts. May I have a second? Sure. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Um, uh, sorry, it's um, 77 checks totaling 139,498 and 57 cents. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Um, I will make a motion for a new resolution 2022-187 for our capital projects apps extracts for four checks totaling $6,987.71. May I have a second? Second. Okay, um, sorry, I apologize for this not making the um, regular agenda. It's six capital checks. Uh, two are for uh, the transfer station compactor and two, I'm sorry, it's four, ch uh, four checks and two are for um, Lawrence Paggi and our attorney for field work. It, it was just misplaced and it missed the agenda. Um, any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, passes unanimously. Okay. Um, let me see. Our next tab is our procurement policy. Um, this is a revised per we, we need to reaffirm our procurement policy, but I put it in front of you because I think it hasn't been revised since, I know it hasn't been revised since 2019. And we may want to um, look at the um, financial thresholds and adjust them, um, you know, for the uh, for four years um, that's passed and, um, uh, make them higher. Um, so I gave it to you so you can think about it. I'll do some work with Shelly on this um, and we can look at what the county and state does and see if we want to um, to adjust it. Okay? Yep. Okay, great. Uh, we did the Star Library Walk. Um, um, I'm gonna save the best for last. Cannabis dispensaries. Um, we, um, opted out of lounges and cannabis dispensaries last December, last November, because we did not know what the state um, authority would be uh, over this. We didn't know what we were not opting into. And now we know what we were opting into. Um, the Marijuana Regulization and Taxation Act has rolled out their laws. And we now know that if we opt into dispensaries, we will have authority to regulate certain aspects of the authorities, like times of operations, place and manner. We always knew we could do place uh, because of zoning, but we didn't know about time or any of these other things. Now that we know what the state regulatory looks like uh, uh, with this, um, and we know what we can have a control over. I wanted to ask the board if something, this is something you wanted to reconsider uh, in opting in. Um, so aside from all this, we still have our zoning law to say in which zones a cannabis dispensary could go, also a lounge if we wanted to, but I think the only thing we were interested in was a dispensary and we wanted to wait. That's right. I just wanted to see what you guys thought and what you wanted to do. 24 seven. Yeah. Of course. No, I think we should, I think we should review the dispensary thing. Yeah, okay. Chauncey, Ed. Me too, yeah. Alan? I agree. Okay, I will have Warren prepare an adopting resolution. We'll bring it up um, and we can, um, you know, start working on it. We can opt back in and then I believe, um, you know, work on our zoning laws and hours of operation. Um, uh, well, does that become legal next year, 2023? No, it becomes legal when, when does I mean, it become legal in the state? Yeah. 
I think so. I don't know when in 2023. Anything else? Okay. Um, Short-term rentals. We've been going back and forth and we have been working with our um, planner. And instead of publishing draft laws, we have been publishing um, sort of, you know, lists of what we're considering for a short-term rental. I want to point out to everybody that short-term rentals are currently illegal in the town of Rhinebeck. They are not in our use table and they are illegal and anyone renting them out is not in compliance with the law. Um, residences, uh, short-term rentals are a commercial use of a residential property. So what we are considering is how we are going to allow um, some kind of legal short-term rental. Um, I'll just go through this with everyone because we've talked about it publicly, I think four times. The next thing I, I think will be a draft law if we're all in agreement. Um, we have signed up with Granicus in July um, for information um, while we're writing uh, and adopting the local law. And the information that we're getting is a 24 hour hotline that residents who are having problems with neighboring short term rentals can call. Um, and um, we will have that information on our website and get that out. But um, if there's noise, if there are parties, if there's trash, you can document it and um, call in into the hotline and it will be reviewed and saved. Also, we've signed up for the address identification uh, for 3960 a year of that's 3900, which um, after it gets going for a couple of months, we'll be able to supply us with all the addresses of houses that were houses, places that are being rented out. Um, and I think that was one of the big criticisms for the last meeting before uh, the pandemic is where's the data? So we're getting the data. Getting the data. Uh, but we did get the data from the county and we know that um, over 4% of our single family homes are uh, short term rental stock. And that's pretty high by um, housing standards. Um, we are considering allowing uh, short-term rentals by property classifications rather than um, zoning um, areas. It's residential three, you know, residential five acre, 10 acre, HP 20 gateways. Instead of doing that, we're going to allow uh, short-term rentals in one family residences of which there are 1,385 units and that classification is 210. We are thinking about allowing them in 215s, which are a one family home with an accessory apartment. Uh, we are thinking about letting um, property classification 240 and 241, which are rural residences with more than 10 acres and rural residences with agriculture and a farm um, with more than 10 acres. And those are 136 units and 17 units each uh, or respectively. We're thinking about allowing them on estates, which is anything with over 50 acres I think, or 75, it's property classification 250 in any case. We're thinking about uh, property classification 280, which is a residence multiple, um, and 281, which is a multiple residence. They are the same thing. 281 is a subset on 280 and our assessors are going to change it. That means um, properties like mine, where we have um, two separate certificates of occupancy. We have a house and a barn. Each has a CFO for a, uh, a residency. Um, we're also considering follow, um, allowing short-term rentals in support of agro-tourism on dairy farms, cattle farms, horse farms, and nurseries, which are property classifications 112, 113, 117, and 170 if they are over 75 acres and potentially these classifications could be unhosted. Um, these would be the only unhosted um, properties that we're thinking of allowing. 
in Rhinecliffe because there is no zoning by right. Everything has to be done with a um, site plan review and a special use permit by the planning board. We would only allow permits on the property classifications here and with a site plan and special use permit for um, from the planning board. Um, and again, only domiciles or permanent residences would be able to be rented out. So if you live in New York City and have a weekend house, you can't rent it out. If you have three houses in Rhinebeck, you can't rent all of them out. You can only rent out that which is your primary residence. If you have an extra bedroom you want to rent out, you can rent it out. If you have um, an in-law apartment and it's your domicile, you can rent it out. Um, we are thinking about a time period to be decided where one could rent out her domicile when she is out of town or out of the country with a, with a manager on call. And I think where we ended up was two months or 60 days. Um, if we let someone rent out a domicile for more than I think four months or five months legally, it's not a domicile. It's a not the place where you live full time. So we are we are considering allowing unhosted STR rentals of domiciles uh, with a manager for a limited period of time. We are saying that um, Actually, here in my notes, I have, we're considering that or a ban on all unhosted STRs. I don't know if everybody knows where he stands on that yet, if you want to chew on it more. Um, any thoughts? Hillary, Hillary, you're, Hillary you yeah. have to raise your hand, you're muted. I'm not uh, oh, sure, I guess we can, Hillary, you're on mute. Oh, okay. I'm I'm off mute. Sorry about that. Yes, I have a short-term rental. Can and, you give um, us your name, please? Hillary Thompson. Hi. Thanks for coming. Hi. And uh, so I'm new to this discussion, although I've been doing this for quite some time. Um, uh, I'm not in the town. I'm in the village. I'm outside of the town. Um, um, then this would not apply to you. So but you're saying unhosted and hosted. I'm not sure you, what you that means. In the village, in the village so we can't. The village, we we have this is home. only for town outside the village residence. The village has its own short-term rental law. Okay. Because there was something about 30 days and I've seen you know articles about that. So I wasn't sure about how this that This is operated. only for town residents um, outside the village. For, it, for anything having to do with your house, the village um, has their own laws. Okay, very good. I do like the, um, the number for disturbances. Would that apply to village as no, well? No, because they haven't opted into it. Um, it's okay. granted, I don't know if they've opted into it, but we did it in advance of writing our law. And you know, you, your, your input is welcome here. You're a town resident as well. This doesn't only apply to you because you're doing it. This is a community-wide law. That's what I'm, that's why I'm on. I, I, I feel like that, you Thank know, you. it's an important process. Yes. Just, you know, I, I, I mean, truthfully, I think that the homes that are rented are kept well. They're, they're, you know, they have to be kept well. And, you know, so, but hopefully, you know, there's not, a, a, I think the disturbances could be a problem. If it's they have been a huge problem in the past and really before COVID, we found that during COVID most houses um, went to being out, rent out long term. So a lot of the problems disappeared. So. Yes. All right, very good. Thank you for listening. Yes, good and thank you. you for coming. Okay. Um, okay, so we're saying, um, oh, we will permitted use of accessory structures on a part of property apartments or bedrooms of the domicile permanent residence, a time period to be decided for the domicile to be rented out as an STR when the owner is away or a manager is on call. Is everybody leaning towards that or towards banning um, unhosted STRs or do you no, not? I'm, I'm favoring people being there in charge of the house, that's fine. Are you, are, do you want to ban 
STR rental if the owner is not there? I'd say yes. That's my opinion. I agree. No, but I, I thought the legislation includes the, the possibility of someone that's who's not what there we're for talking about. What what do you guys want to do? This, you know, we could either ban it all together and start out yeah. slow, or we could allow a period of it to be rented out unhosted. That's what we're discussing. Yeah. I think I in my opinion, if we allow it to begin with, we're gonna get yeah, I, I'm, I'm without litigation if we try to take it away. So I would not allow it from the get go. Well, it, see how everything not, goes. We're not worried about litigation. This is currently yeah. illegal. Um, it's a commercial use of a residential property that's within our purview. Well, the, 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 hosted, the percentage of hosted is de minimis. I mean, these are we're talking about unhosted. We can talk about hosted and legislated, but these these are unhosted. That's the issue. Um. I'm not following you. What's the minimus? Hosted rentals, I believe, are small in percentage. Well, here's the thing. I just gave you the numbers. We I have, understand it. I believe that the numbers show that they're small. The number well, we have 18 one-family units with apartments. We have about, um, I don't yeah, know. We don't have the Granicus data back to tell us what's hosted, <laughs> hosted or even numbers, correct? Through our assessor we know the capacity of properties understood yeah all right so you are in favor of allowing a period to be rented out unhosted understood. yeah but that's that's one of the basic again i i my understanding at the moment is that's one of the basic intents of this is that unhosted is allowed for some period of the year correct that's what we're discussing so Ed yes, is not necessarily I'm in, favor in favor of it. Alan is not necessarily in favor of it. You are in favor of it. I am necessarily in favor of it. Okay. Chauncey. As am I. Okay. Uh, and I don't know where I stand. So. Um, can I ask another question? I'm sorry. I'm so um, confused. Can, yeah, yeah. Can you please wait where it's sort of. A, thank you. I'll take questions at the end. Thanks, Hillary. Okay. Um, um, okay. So we don't know where we are on that. I mean. Um, two for two against and I I, I don't know <laughs> it's a tough call it's just well, right. and it's appropriate that we wrestle with it because it is a tough call it is yeah I will we can talk about it more yeah. um okay so we are not going to allow the uh short term uh, only one short term pe permit for accessory dwelling or property so I guess if you had a house uh, like I do with three certificates of occupancy, only one unit could be rented out as a short term right. rental. Right. I have a cottage, I have a, a barn and a house. All of them. Would are that be hosted or unhosted? Well, we haven't decided that yet. I mean, why wouldn't, it, why wouldn't it be two, Elizabeth? Well, we've said we only want one. Um, we There are also houses here with 19 cottages on the property. There are a couple of, of um, prop, well, one or two, do we want them to rent out all 19 or only one? Oh, okay, I simply misunderstood. We're talking about 5D on the sheet, correct? Yeah. I, uh, I misunderstood what uh, no, to convey. Yes, only one STR per property. So I live in a house, oh, I, I have, I live in a house, I have two, it's my abode, I'm here. I could rent out my accessory dwelling anytime I wanted to as a short-term rental because I am here in my abode and there's an accessory dwelling. Huh. Or you could rent out your, your main house if we allow unhosted. Uh, you couldn't do that with your accessory dwelling being rented out if you weren't. Right, there. understood, right, yeah. right. okay. okay. Um, but like- or you can move into your accessory building and. <laughs> oh, I'm not doing anything. I, All right, I understand that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm not even inviting my friends over anymore. But, um, <laughs> just a joke, but um, uh, it's the COVID shut-in mentality. Um, so um, if it's your house, you can rent out bedrooms whenever you want. You could do whatever you want when you're there. We are not allowing non-conforming accessory swellings to be rented out like tiny homes, tree houses, yurts, campers, um, air streams, any of that. It has to have a accessory dwelling permit. 
Yeah, no, I think that falls straight into building code, which is it's not a house, it's not a house. Yeah. Um, I agree with that. Uh, there is no allowance for pre existing short term rentals because they are not currently legal in the town of Rhinebeck. So people can't say, I've been doing this for 10 years. Can you please allow me to continue to do it? Because in fact, it's illegal. And if you're doing it in the town, you're not in compliance with the law. Um, we need a plan to roll out the regulations with a phase in, we need to work on the timeline. All STRs will require a permit and a fee and a fire inspection, dedicated off street parking, one space per bedroom, which could be a problem in Rhinecliff or have you know, other hamlet areas, um, weekly garbage removal, inspection of the property. And if you have an outstanding violation, unpaid fine or fee, um, you cannot get a permit. Um, two occupants per bedroom. I guess we're the last time we decided unlimited bedrooms, who cares? Well, it's, it it's a car thing. I mean, ultimately, like if it's if it's a car per bedroom or whatever the standard is, there's only so many people can show up in the car. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know how we legislate how many people sleep in a bedroom. Okay, well, okay. Well, I mean, okay. To, to get in the weeds, like that one seems like hard. He's taken. Um, so one car per bedroom, can't legislate how many people sleep in a bedroom. I, I've i seen it done. I've seen it you know, on Airbnb, like two people, per, but whatever. Um, I'll put a question mark that here. one time in college. <laughs> That's how you like to travel to Hawaii. Just you know, with once, just 20 once. people in a bedroom. Um, <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I got lost. Uh, you know, a nominal permitting and filing fee for costs, violations. Granicus, um, as part of our deal with them, and the county does pay for a lot of this once we pass our, our law, um, gives us access to uh, an attorney. So I want to talk to that attorney um, or whoever their expert is and get advice on permitting or filing fees on violations, on the definition of violations and fees for violations. And um, one other thing, which is a um, the best way for a staff um, and Granicus um, inter interface. Because the county wants taxes on this stuff. That's their interest in all this. Well, this has nothing to do with the county. I said Granicus. No, I know, no, I know but Granicus interface is basically allows them to tax properly because they know who to tax, right? Yeah. Because uh, otherwise, yeah. who knows what they're doing? Yeah, they collect a bed tax. And I'm hoping that our new um, assembly representative, whoever that's going to be next year, will carry a law for us that will allow Rhinebeck to collect a bed tax, just like the county does. Um, um, so are you guys OK? And someone can do this with me if we talk to Granis, Granicus about permit and filing fees, um, violations. Yeah, no, 100%, because at the end of the day, to me, it seems about permitting and um, compliance, right? Like, yeah. those are the two bookends that make this work. Yeah, so. and Granicus has online permitting, but we do need a staff to interface with that, and I just want to see what Yeah, what, yeah, and, and that's going to be what like it's about. Okay, that's where we are. We are... Um, in violent agreement on everything except hosted versus unhosted. Um, and um, does, uh, is everyone in agreement with Josh that it we're not going to say how many bedrooms can be rented out? If you have a 10 bedroom house, you can rent it out. If you have a two bedroom house, you can rent it out. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, and, and, and we'll make it between the uh, owner and the, the renters, Renter. how many people per bedroom? But right. we will say one car per bedroom. Yeah, because that's the limiting factor. Yes. Or okay. if you just want to go to the Department of Health and ask about how big the septic system is, that's the other limiting factor. Well, I mean, you your septic system is based on your bedrooms, and and mm -hmm. you know, no house in Rhinebeck should be having bedrooms that aren't. Yeah, I, I, I just, I, I think between the, the fire inspection, the building inspection, and the parking requirements, those are actually 
probably the most restricting or one of the most restricting elements of all this. You no, know, and things will come up too. Someone will come up for a permit and they'll say they have a, you know, a four bedroom house, but they it's really a five bedroom house, but they don't but have the a for it. family that's a one family. I'm sorry. My neighbor who has a two family, or they're currently using it as a two family, but it's only one family. That's in the village, so I'm not going to worry about it. And plus, but I'm not the building. It's in the an example. In the zoning. Yeah. All right. Um, just um, Hillary, you had a question or a comment? Yeah, I'm just jumping into this whole thing, and maybe I need to get the notes or just follow up a little bit more. But if you're saying, I mean, I, I feel so ignorant about this. If you're saying the village, it's illegal to have short-term rentals. What is the discussion about? Is this a proposal to allow them, we're the allow town. people to we're, do it? We're the town, we are not the village. Not the village. I mean, so, I'm, I'm sorry, I oh, the village. Right, I, I keep on getting instance that, But technically, even though we are intertwined, it's the hole in the donut, and we are very close to one another, we can only legislate for the town. But I don't think that's your question, Hillary. What's your question? I guess my question is, if it's illegal to have short-term rentals in the town, why are there? I mean, you seem, it seems regulated now. Are, are you well, allowed? We are, we are looking to pass a law to make it legal with, uh -huh. under, with certain conditions. Okay, now I understand. All right, I understand. It's currently <laughs> illegal. People rent them out illegally. And now we're looking to legalize uh, it with parameters. Well, you know, and you could you could look at people who have been doing this very respectfully for a while and maybe get some advice from people who know sure. how to really do it really well and keep your neighbors happy, bring in a lot of money into the town and that kind of thing. Thank you. All right. I appreciate uh, joining. Sure. Thanks appreciate for coming. All like, right. Take care. The whole way to the end. Yeah, I know. It's great. Anybody else here for comments or questions about short term housing? Okay, to be continued, we will, I guess, um, have, um, you know, a draft of a law um, and get public comment. I, I don't know what we'll do about, uh, sorry, someone needs to, um, it's, there's an echo. Um, I don't know, I'll talk to Jim, I'll have him draft up a law. I, I'll talk to Granicus first, I'll reach out to one of you guys and see if you want to jump on the call with me. And we'll, you know, put together a draft and and uh, set a public hearing. Sound like fun? Oh, yeah. oh yes. <laughs> You're yeah. really confused then, Hillary, when we start when we get to that stage. Sorry. <laughs> what? Bad now. what? What? Chauncey? I say she thinks it's bad now about the confusion. Just wait till we get. Yeah, to just the wait, Hillary. Wait till, oh, wait till I come to that one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, and is everybody okay with the, in theory, letting farms rent out um, unhosted if they're over 75 acres? I think they got to have a manager just like uh, somebody yeah, who's half an course. acre. Of yeah. course, but a farm can't be a domicile, but they can have- Yes, they can if there's a home on it and somebody's living there. Yeah, but if it's not in support of agro-tourism- Oh, I see what you mean. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yes. yes. You know, there, and then we'll look at our event code too, so that we can bring more weddings and party venues. A good catch. I missed that. Yeah, it's all right. We, we had talked about it before. You just forgot it. So you, yeah. you might have caught it the last time. Okay. Um, I don't know. I don't really think we have anything else. Joan, did I miss anything? I would like to take a moment about something, if I may, when you want me to. Yes. Just the time. Uh, despite many promises, and you've heard all about them, we still have not got a contract backing up the proposal from Field Turf to do the resurfacing of our tennis and pickleball courts. Ed and I have discussed it, and we proposed the following. And uh, I know that Warren is fine with this that we not wait any longer for them to prepare and present a contract. We ask Warren to do it, which Warren tells me is probably more common in municipal work anyway than having the vendor do it and send it to them. Ed and I think if we do that, they'll engage with us. We may have to negotiate it some, but we think we'll get it signed. Get oh. it done. I would is like that to... why they're not doing it? Because they can't, they're just not preparing the contract? Right, exactly. 
I think that. this, I'm sorry, go ahead. Ed. Yeah, no, that's what it is. The, the fact that he's backlogged on many contracts, not only us, but there are everybody else too. It probably, it's probably at the bottom of very tall lawyers pile. I'm not sympathetic to that, but I suspect that's a big part of what's going on. Maybe if we do that bit of work and get it to them, we can at least get a contract in place. Okay, so they're still willing to do the work. They just oh, kind no, of- yeah, they keep that's asking cool. us a lot. Okay. And it'll, it'll be an acid test in that regard, Elizabeth. So, yeah. Okay, that's a great idea. Um, yep. Also, thanks. just thanks, Chauncey. Also, with regard to our artificial turf playing field, it's in our um, engineer's hands, uh, and he's um, soon going to we're waiting for Clark to give us an add on price for the additional infrastructure that's needed for drainage. And then we can enter a contract. Again, we're having trouble getting the, are they 36 or 48 inch steel conduit pipes? There's a back order on those. Right. Yeah, yes, but they, they do have to confirm the drainage capacity of the, of the playing field area. They did test fits, it was back and forth. It was positive, but Anyway, the long and short of it is that we're waiting for the answer. Still working on that. And um, the subcommittee for the skate park is working on getting a design and a sketch and uh, a sketch design and a quote that's in their hands. So we'll we'll commit more money to that in their 2023 budget. We'll commit money to pickleball courts in our 2023 budget. Um, ticking along at a, a very slow pace here. Anything else? The only one thing I want to say, and no one's here to listen, is if you think you need a building permit, or you even think you may need a building permit, call Ed Maddock or Kimberly Deal. I know. There's a tremendous amount of people. I'm an architect. People are calling me. Fix this, fix that. You need a building permit for just about everything you do. So no one's listening, but tell Thanks for that reminder. We're getting a new roof on our cottage, and guess what? I'm going to get a building, building permit. permit. It's a standard repair, but you still need I'm going to get the permit. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Uh, thanks, everybody. Hearing thanks. Um, nothing else, I'd like to make a. Oh, 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 hold on. A message from. Oh, you're brilliant, Joan. Um, Joan asks Does the board want to vote to allow Warren to do the contract for resurfacing the courts? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Make a motion. I move at seconds or the other way around. Okay, so this is resolution, uh, whatever it is, Joan, yeah. 188. Uh, 20, Thank you, Joan. 2022. Yeah. Good. Uh, to allow Warren to prepare a contract for field turf. Field turf? No, uh, yeah, that's, 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 yes. I believe that's their subsidiary. It's field turf. Clark oh, field yeah. turf. No, wow. field turf is like they're buying a, the that's like Okay, well, who, who's doing the, who are oh, we having? Field turf is, yes. Okay, so for Warren to do a contract for field turf to do the resurfacing of our tennis. And they're, they're a division, aren't they, Chance? They're a division of field turf? I yes. Think. All right, let's not answer. beat it to death. I just want a resolution yes, to allow turf. Warren to do. Yeah. Thank field you. Turf talk. Oh, yeah. yeah. All in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thanks, Joan. Um, anything else from anybody? Any board members? Any other clerks? Any library directors? Okay, hearing nothing, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Right. Okay, everybody, right. see you in September. Right. Thanks. Bye. See you in September. That's a song. <laughs> Sing it, Ed. I'll be, never mind. See you in September.